Oh, hello there guys. Hi again, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Today we're gonna do something pretty simple. We're gonna teach a dog how to beg. This trick is not for the faint-hearted, it takes time and effort and if you're not willing to put in the time and the effort then there's no point in you watching this video. This trick takes a lot of muscle building and a lot of control and balance training in terms of the dog and themselves. So it can take anywhere from a couple of weeks to a few months to develop this trick to a point where your dog can hold it for a prolonged period of time. However, when you have it nailed, it's extremely impressive and people are jealous. I'm gonna just be super upfront with you guys. If your dog is not holding the behavior or not progressing, the chances are that they are either too weak to do this or they're in pain. So just don't keep going and pushing and pushing and pushing because that's cruel and go and see a vet to just double check that everything's okay. That being said, let's go and get stuck in. I'm gonna switch rooms and let's find Piper. I'm gonna go super fast through this. Remember that this should be spread out over many, many different sessions. There's seven points in this. You wanna really be making this take at least two weeks, if not longer. So the first thing that you wanna do, guys, is prepare as we did on our last trick. We want to make sure that we've got a reward marker. If you're just using the word yes or similar, that's fine. I use a clicker. Some food that the dog likes and will happily work for. You could use cheese if kibble's not enough. And you wanna be in a space where the dog is happy to do behaviors, tricks training and is not distracted. I use the living room. The first thing in the integral part of this behavior really is a hand target. So if you haven't got a hand target, you wanna be um, clicking and rewarding for nose touches on your hand. They don't need to be sustained, so not for a long duration, but you really wanna make sure that this is done at this stage so that the dog is happy to find the hand, touch it, and then get the reward. That is absolutely vital. Once you've got that, you can move on to step three, which is the up touch. So essentially what you're doing is you're moving your hand above the dog when the dog is in a sit and you're just wanting them to reach up and touch the hand. They don't need to raise their paws off of the floor at this stage, but if you do get paws off the floor, you really wanna heavily reward that. Again, we do not want sustained touch on the hand. It's more important that the dog is moving upwards. As the dog's more confident with this, you then wanna move the hand backwards over the dog so that the dog essentially is using their core to stay upright like that so instead of leaning forwards we're, we're actually sitting her back on her back feet so you only want to be doing this once you're happy that the behavior is understood but yeah that is step three step four you want to be moving to go up for a hand touch and your dog needs to preempt you in that so essentially you raise your hand the dog's front feet come off the floor and you reward we don't want sustained hold at this stage it's more important that they're not touching the hand but they're still moving upwards so you want to really be heavily rewarding that behavior it's also important at this stage to really be looking for good understanding so if the dog offers that upwards movement with the front paws you're in for a winner here so when you've got the dog actively moving into a vertical position at that stage you kind of want to encourage them to move backwards slightly more do not lure too far back over the dog but you do want to make sure that they understand that the point of this is that they're lifting their front paws off and also pushing their weight to their back end that's super important so step five, step five is adding the verbal. So you, again, like our last one, you want to just kind of preempt the behavior, keep everything super simple and nice and little. At this stage, you can also begin to add a slight bit of duration by just holding that and giving them a clear cue to remain in the position. Do not reprimand if the dog cannot hold it. If the dog bounces out of the position, it just really means that they don't have the strength to be able to hold it there. You can see how active Piper's muscles are in trying to hold it. So just keep it super short. Step six, you wanna be changing your position. So at this stage, when your dog understands the verbal and the behavior, you then wanna start moving your position. So I go upwards before I go further away. So I've gone to kneeling. And then once I'm happy that she is still doing the same criteria, I then move to being crouched down. From the crouch, that's a good position 
position really for them to be able to do this anyway. Standing, you may have some issues with this because your dog might want to come right up or move backwards or move closer. Just make sure that the criteria is the same. So step seven, we're going to add the distance. So in adding the distance, what we really want to do is just go back a little bit and, and just ask them to wait and then move into an easier position, the easiest one for them and then reward. Do not ask for a prolonged hold at this stage, go back a couple of steps. So we just want in really front feet off of the floor. If the dog offers the behavior with a good hold, brilliant. Again, if they tap down, it just means that the strength's not there. So don't like reprimand them for it. You then also want to be moving your position lower, so to your photography position. Now, in this situation, obviously, you guys can see in the video that Piper breaks it. So she's like, why are you down there? This just means that we have not proofed this well enough. So in this situation, what you want to be doing really is going back a step, making it a bit easier and asking for smaller criteria changes and then build it up. At the end of this session, Piper was getting quite tired, so I wasn't going to push it any further. But you just build on this session after session after session until you've got a dog that is awesome. You can also add the full trick, which is the play dead behavior, which is entertaining. Bang. <laughs> and that is how you train a dog to beg. If you like this video, please press the subscribe button and click on the bell icon. The bell icon will help you out because it sends you a notification every single time I upload a video. I upload every week and at the moment it's more than that. I'll see you later. Yeah.